So, did Megalodon definitely go extinct? Huh, I sure hope so. The ocean is vast and filled with terrifying looking creatures, but the prehistoric Megalodon would put them all to shame. For over 10 million years, the toothy Megalodon ruled the world's waters, and we're thanking our lucky stars it doesn't exist today. While theories out there argue that these bad boys of the ocean are still around, there's no doubt that they're long gone and extinct. Still don't believe it? Just get ready for a big dose of scientific evidence. Meet the Megalodon, the largest shark ever documented in Earth's history. The Megalodon seems to be the stuff nightmares are made of. Or dreams if you love impressive creatures that could use you as a toothpick. Its full name is Carcaraclus Megalodon, but some shark enthusiasts just call it the Meg. Whatever name it goes by, this giant was the biggest baddie of the ocean when it terrorized the waters two million years ago. If you're afraid of modern sharks, get ready for these facts because this prehistoric predator puts them all to shame. The Megalodon was the biggest shark ever. We'll start with the obvious here. This shark species was the largest this planet has ever seen. Different estimates put its size anywhere from 45 up to 60 feet in length. To put that into perspective, 60 feet would make the Megalodon about four times the size of the average great white shark. The Meg weighed up to 100 tons. Again, for comparison, the T-Rex weighed a mere 9 tons. The biggest shark living today is the whale shark, which can grow up to 40 feet long. So there's really no other shark that can compare to the Megalodon's massive size. We don't have many fossils of it today. There's currently a very limited amount of Megalodon fossils. Shark skeletons are made of cartilage, which doesn't fossilize very well. So, that means almost all that remains of the mighty Meg are its teeth, which have been found on every continent except for Asia and Antarctica. Given that its fossilized teeth are everywhere, scientists have gathered that the Megalodon traveled throughout the world. Using these fossils as a guide, scientists have tried to put a picture together of what this giant predator actually looked like and how it lived. Many of the fossils have been found on Shark Tooth Hill near Bakersfield, California. This is a popular site where people can dig for teeth while wearing protective gloves. Although some shark teeth have been buried for ages, they can still be sharp enough to cut through the skin. Speaking of teeth… The Megalodon had enormous teeth. The name itself says it all. Megalodon means big tooth. Most of its teeth were about 4 to 5 inches long. But the largest tooth ever found was 7.48 inches, and it was discovered in Peru. With a rare size like that, these fossils can be very valuable. A 7-inch high-quality megalodon tooth can be sold for up to $50,000. But if you have a small tooth in your collection, don't expect to get a large amount of cash for it. Small megalodon teeth tend to be valued quite low. The Megalodon had a killer smile. Those teeth weren't just super massive. In order to feast regularly on large prey, the Meg had an impressive set of 276 feet that sat in five rows in its mouth. Most fossilized teeth that have been recovered show a significant amount of wear on the tips, and some have had the tips completely broken off from biting on the bones of its prey. All those teeth arranged in five rows served as a backup system so that the Megalodon would never run out. As soon as it lost a tooth, another one would replace it within 48 hours. That way, this massive predator could feed his insatiable appetite and munch on prey non-stop. The largest Megalodon tooth ever found, which measures at about 7 inches long, is almost three times larger than the teeth you'll find in the great white sharks of today. The Megalodon sported 276 of these giant and sharply serrated teeth that could rip the flesh of dolphins, whales, and possibly even other sharks, according to the Natural History Museum in London. Scared yet? <laughs> well, I am. But don't go running for the hills just yet. 
Megalodon has long been extinct. Despite blockbuster hit movies like 2018's The Meg and conspiracy theories running rampant on the internet, these prehistoric sea beasts no longer exist. Yep, rest assured that Megalodon did, in fact, go extinct 2.6 million years ago. And the proof is in the scientific pudding. <laughs> My favorite flavor. About 2.6 million years ago marked the beginning of the era known as the Pleistocene. At the beginning of this era, temperatures began to cool and glaciers started to form all over. If you're thinking this was the time of the Ice Ages, you'd be right oh, my friend. Due to the planet's falling temperatures, things started changing in the Earth's oceans. For one thing, whales started migrating to find more food, landing them closer to the poles. Being one of the Megalodon's primary meal to goes, it became harder and harder for the humongous predator to find whales to munch on. Perhaps this was the reason for Megalodon's extinction? Well, that's what scientists thought up until 2016, when Dr. Catalina Piamento and her team of researchers came onto the scene and said that this probably wasn't the case at all. While there's no doubt that the Megalodon definitely went extinct, it probably wasn't because they couldn't keep up with whales in the cooler temperatures. And that's because Megalodon fossils have actually been found in waters as cold as 33 degrees Fahrenheit which means that these giant sharks weren't afraid of ice-cold temperatures. Sure, they typically preferred a much cozier 53 to 80 degrees setting, but Piamento's study showed that they could totally bear ice waters. This isn't all that hard to believe, since today's sharks are actually mesothermic, meaning they're able to keep their body temperature slightly warmer even when surrounding waters are colder than they'd like. Okay, so if the whale's new migration patterns weren't what killed the megalodon species, then what did? Like with so many things, the answer is competition. That's right, even though the megalodon were ferocious and scary, there were actually other flesh-eating predators sharing the ocean that liked to eat a lot of the same things that these giant sharks did. Talk about a dog-eat-dog -dog world, or rather, a shark-eat-shark… shark… Uh, sh never mind, you get the point. One of the Megalodon's biggest competitors in the deep blue during the mid-Miocene era was the now-extinct genus of sperm whale, known as the Liviatin melvilli. These prehistoric sperm whales had shorter jaws than today's sperm whales and they were able to chomp down on sharks and even other whales. Yow! And these weren't the only carnivorous whales that roamed the ocean waters during this era. Megalodon was the biggest and baddest shark of the ocean 23 million years ago. It could grow up to 60 feet, and its jaw bite was stronger than a T-Rex's. It was a force to be reckoned with, eating other sharks, whales, and dolphins for breakfast. So, you might think that there was nothing that could stop it. But even this massive shark had enemies, and their fights could be lethal. Think of a T-Rex versus Godzilla. Way out in the middle of the ocean, wearing life vests, duking it out, and you get the picture. Well, maybe not life vests. Those are from the Flintstones period. Cetothurium Cetothurium was a baleen whale from the Cetotheridae family. It lived in the mid-Miocene period to the early Pliocene period and grew up to 15 feet. Fossil records have revealed that Cetothurium would be Megalodon's top target. Megalodon would be massive compared to Cetothurium, but Cetothurium had a few tricks up its sleeve. 
The very first whales had pointed teeth for catching and killing other sea animals. Later on, Cetothurium evolved and developed baleen, a strong but flexible material made of keratin, which caught small organisms and worked as a strainer as it fed. The small organisms would have been caught in large enough quantities to keep Cetothurium satisfied. This would keep Cetothurium close to the surface and away from Megalodon. But when Cetothurium was spotted by Megalodon, there was no escape. Megalodon would dive down to look up at its prey, and then it would ram Cetothurium at high speed, damaging vertebrae in the process. Cetothurium would be too stunned to be able to escape. And all's well that ends well. Zygophysetter veruli. This large predator was unknown until geologists found an almost complete zygophysetter skeleton in 2016 on the shores of southern Italy. It's also referred to as a killer sperm whale because of its strong similarities in size to the killer whale and its close relationship to the sperm whale. Zygophysetter lived in the late Miocene period, some 11 to 7 million years ago, and it cruised the Mediterranean region. From fossil records, paleontologists have gathered that Zygophysetter grew to be 20 feet long. It had an asymmetrical cranium, which is commonly associated with high-frequency sound production and echolocation. Zygophysetter used its echolocation to find and hunt large prey. Their teeth could range from 6 to 10 inches, and they had 14 teeth in their lower jaw and 13 on top. Since their teeth were large and they had full jaw functionality, it's likely that they fed on large fish, dolphins, small whales, and cephalopods such as squids and octopuses. Its lethal bite would have been its best chance against Megalodon. Allophysetter. Now, Allophysetter was a predatory whale, very similar to modern day sperm whales. Sperm whales are the largest predators and the largest toothed whales today. Allophysetter lived in the Miocene period. Back then, the country of Panama was underwater, and many species crossed from the east coast of North America to the west coast through a passageway. The passageway called the Central American Seaway, was also a favorite travel spot for Megalodon. Allophysetters reached a length of 20 feet and weighed about 2,400 pounds. With these specifications, anyone can see that Megalodon was much larger. But Allophysetters would swim in groups to repel attacks by giant beasts like Megalodon in the hope of being protected by the group. Oh my, Brigmophysetter shagensis. Now, Brigmophysetter was a highly predatory sperm whale. The only known fossil is a nearly complete skeleton that is dated at 14 to 15 million years old. From it, paleontologists gathered that Brigmophysetter was 23 feet long. Like Zygophysetter, Brigmophysetter also had teeth in its upper and lower jaws. These powerful jaws and their size set them at the top of the food chain, and they roamed near the coast of Japan. Like sperm whales, it had a spermaceti organ, which gave it the ability to use echolocation to find and identify prey. Megalodons traveled all the way around the world, as evidenced by the location of their fossils. Megalodons and Brigmophysetters swam the oceans at the same time, the Miocene period. Brigmophysetter was a predator to fish, squid, and other small whales, but its role could switch from predator to prey when it faced Megalodon. Ramphosuchus Now Ramphosuchus is one of the largest known crocodiles ever to roam Earth. The world wouldn't even be aware of the existence of Ramphosuchus if it wasn't for the discovery of incomplete sets of fossils that are mostly teeth and skulls. Ramphosuchus is estimated to have been 26 to 36 feet long. It inhabited the Indian subcontinent and, like Megalodon, it lived in the Miocene period. It's a relative of the modern false garial, a native of peninsular Malaysia. Like the false garia, 
It is believed to have had a longer and thinner snout compared to other crocodiles. It also had multiple teeth to capture its prey. Theory suggests that Ramphosuchus fed on fish and, on occasion, much larger prey. Ramphosuchus was such an excellent swimmer thanks to its strong and long tail. Given its massive size, it would go into rivers and oceans to try to find enough food to sustain it. This is where it was likely to have occasionally encountered Megalodon. Ramphosuchus and Megalodon would have fought over the same food. Given that Ramphosuchus had such a long and strong bite, it would have been a big challenger to Megalodon. Leviathan Melville You might know this whale by the name Leviathan. Soon after researchers discovered Leviathan's fossils and assigned it the name Leviathan, they realized that the name had already been taken by a mastodon a century earlier. This caused the switch to the Hebrew spelling of Leviathan. Now, Leviathan and Megalodon were two of the most terrifying creatures to roam the oceans, and both lived during the Miocene period. Leviathan was a whale that was 60 feet long and weighed up to 50 tons. Its largest teeth were up to 14 inches long. A theory about Leviathan's method of hunting is that it was very similar to Megalodon's. It would dive deep and headbutt its prey at fast speeds, and its target would be other whales. Megalodon and Leviathan competed for the same food and fought over turf. They both preferred to feed on baleen whales like Cetothurium, which we mentioned earlier. Leviathan had the longest teeth, but Megalodon had the strongest bite. They were both of a similar size and weight and had plenty of reasons to fight each other. So who do you think would win in a fight? It's unclear if these two beasts actually targeted each other, but it is likely that they butted heads over food. Regardless of whether these predators could win a battle against Megalodon or not, their existence put a big dent in Megalodon's lifespan. Megalodon was of such a massive size that it needed over 2,500 pounds of food a day. Research suggests that the increase in competition for food from other predators and the lack of prey might have been a strong factor in Megalodon's extinction. So, who do you think would win a fight between Leviathan and Megalodon? Do you think any of these predators could have taken down Megalodon? Tell us your opinion in the comments! By the end of the Miocene, a new shark entered the picture and changed everything. It was the Carcharodon hubbelli, the oldest ancestor of today's great white shark. And this new kid on the block wasn't afraid to go head-to-head -head with the mighty Megalodon when it came to hunting for prey. How do scientists know this? Well, teeth marks of the Carcharodon hubbelli have been found in fossils of the same whales the Megalodon liked to chew. As time moved forward into the Pliocene era, whales were starting to disappear. While there were about 60 different whale species in the previous Miocene age, only 40 remained by the time of the Pliocene. Many of these whales had evolved and sported baleen instead of teeth. These bristle-looking things in the whale's mouths serve as filtration system that helps them catch more krill, their favorite food. The krill they'd feed on ate primarily microscopic algae known as diatoms. But around 3 million years ago, the many different kinds of diatoms started to diminish, leaving only a few different types. While it's still not known why this happened, it could have been due to a shift in ocean water circulation. Because of this lack of diatoms, there weren't as many krill swimming around, which in turn left whales with empty bellies. As these whales slowly disappeared, so did the megalodon. Circle of life, right? At this time, the megalodon had to put their game faces on and fight even harder against the great white sharks who were smaller and faster. That'd be like racing a Ford Escape with a Porsche Carrera GT. Catch my drift? <laughs> with these great white sharks being more agile and smaller, they required less food than the megalodon. And that, Brightsiders, is why 2.6 million years ago, 
the very last megalodon roamed the oceans as the scariest shark around. Giant, blood-hungry predator or not, there's always something a little sad about species dying out, don't you think? But what if the megalodon had survived the whale food shortage and continued to thrive? Would today's oceans look different? Well, you'd be way less likely to go swimming in the ocean, am I right? <laughs> well, jokes aside, today's marine life would be a little different if the megalodon were still around. For one thing, we may not have the massive whale species we've come to know, like the blue whale. These guys can measure up to 82 feet, making them the biggest animal we've ever seen on this Earth. They managed to grow to such a hefty size thanks to the fact that, over a couple million years, these bigger whales weren't hunted by the ocean's new, smaller predators – the great white shark and the orca. Without being on someone's dinner plate, larger species of whales continue to grow and thrive, becoming the massive animals they are today. While today's great white sharks aren't even close to being as big as the megalodon, they seem to be following in its fin steps. The great white grows about 3 feet larger than its ancestors that swam alongside the megalodon during the Pliocene. On top of that, they seem to grow faster when they're younger, similar to how the megalodon did. Does this mean that the great white has the potential to become as large and fierce as the megalodon in the future? Well, with whales growing as big as they are today, and the great white thriving in our oceans, the next megalodon could be right around the corner. Well, considering that it took millions of years for the megalodon to evolve and grow as big as they were in their prime, that's going to be one long and distant corner. Whew. So, there you have it. Scientific proof that the megalodon no longer exists. Sorry to burst your bubble if you were hoping otherwise. It looks like the only megalodon you'll be seeing in the near future will be on screen. It's not related to the great white shark. Another well-known and equally feared shark, although now it seems like a puny little runt, is the great white, which can be found in the coastal areas of all major oceans. Popular belief has it that the great white shark is a descendant of the meg. But that claim has been disproven. When the first fossilized teeth of the megalodon were discovered, they placed the mighty shark in the same genus as the great white. But fossil discoveries that have been made since show that the megalodon actually comes from a single evolutionary line that can be traced 60 million years back to the Ododus shark. The megalodon had a powerful bite. In order to chew on the bones of its prey, the meg needed to have a very powerful bite. To figure out how strong its bite was, a research group led by biologist Dr. Stephen Rowe conducted simulations and reported that the megalodon could bite down on his prey with 24,000 to 40,000 pounds of pressure. As for the Tyrannosaurus rex, it had just 12,800 pounds of bite force, while the great white shark has only 4,000 pounds. With powerful jaws like that, the megalodon could crush a small car in a second though it'd probably break all of its teeth in the process. But no worries, they'd all grow back in a few days. Its favorite dish was whales. Giant beasts have giant appetites, and the Meg was no exception. It had to roam the seven seas in order to meet its daily requirement of 2,500 pounds of food. So, that means it needed some really big prey to accomplish that goal. While it feasted on just about anything that dared cross its path, like fish, seals, and sea turtles, whales were its favorite dish. Scientists know that the megalodon loved to eat whales because fossilized whale bones have been found with bite marks that match the megalodon's teeth. Experts theorize that the meg would dive deep into the ocean, stalk its prey from below, and ram the whale at full speed, fracturing its bones, shocking the poor thing, and thus disabling it. Their nurseries have been discovered. When the megalodon was ready to give birth, it would travel to shallow waters where large predators couldn't follow. Scientists have found several of these nurseries in the Bone Valley region of Florida, 
the Calvert Cliffs in Maryland, and the Gadden Formation in Panama, to name a few. And experts know these spots are nurseries because they found one and a half inch long baby megalodon teeth there. But before your aw, how cute meter starts to go off, you should know that baby megalodons were about six and a half feet long at birth. Even at that size, they still needed to be protected from other big sharks and whales. So, like modern sharks, megalodon young probably stayed in the nursery until they were big enough to stand their own ground against larger predators. It was top of the food chain. The megalodon was the top predator of the ocean, until it wasn't. The giant shark went extinct 2.6 million years ago, and there are several theories as to why this happened. One of them suggests climate change is to blame. The megalodon would swim in warm waters, but climate change would have decreased the temperature of the oceans over the years until the meg could no longer survive in the cold waters. Another theory claims that it was increased competition from large predators that left this massive shark without any food. A 2017 study published in the Journal of Paleogeography, Paleoclimatology, and Paleoecology claims that the megalodon met its end when its prey went extinct. This study theorizes that, with a disappearance of prey, the predator that feasts on it would go extinct as well. Since small baleen whales went extinct, it's likely that the megalodon soon followed. Now, let's take a moment to be thankful that humans weren't around during the Meg's reign. But would you prefer that the megalodon was still alive? Do you know any other interesting facts about this mega shark? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to stay on the bright side of life. Few things terrify people less than sharks. Quick and sharp toothed, these predators often appear in the nightmares of beachgoers. At the same time, the dangers that sharks present fascinate people. Dozens of films depict these bloodthirsty and formidable creatures. People marvel at their power, strength, and size. Indeed, their size can be really impressive. Great White Shark, 23 feet long. The average length of a great white is 23 feet. However, the largest shark people have come across was 26 feet long. Wow, that's half the length of a basketball court. Despite such an impressive size, great white sharks can move at a speed of 35 miles per hour, which is really fast for underwater traffic. The bite of a great white has a terrifying force of 1.8 tons per square inch. That's 10 times more forceful than a lion's bite. As for the teeth themselves, a great white has five rows of teeth. Each row contains 46 teeth, and each tooth is of a size similar to a human palm with a length of 3.5 inches. By the way, these guys don't ever get cavities. Hundreds of teeth can fall out and regrow within a shark's lifetime. Lucky them! Female sharks grow to be much larger than males. At maturity, a great white can reach a weight of 1,500 to 2,400 pounds. And now brace yourself. The heaviest great white shark on record weighed an epic 7,328 pounds. There's almost no place on Earth where you won't have an opportunity to meet a great white shark. These animals hunt along the coasts of all the continents. Well, except for Antarctica, as the water there is too cold. The temperature great whites prefer ranges from 54 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you're really eager to make the acquaintance of a great white shark, come to Dyer Island in South Africa. This place is also called Shark Alley. And since most great white sharks choose exactly this location for life, you can see why. Researchers are sure that great white sharks have been roaming the seas for the last 16 million years, perhaps even more. And while scientists used to believe that a great white's life expectancy didn't exceed 25 years, new research proves that these predators typically live up to 70 years. Pacific Sleeper Shark, 23.6 feet long. Pacific sleeper sharks look unlike any other shark. Their body is shaped like a torpedo, they have a wide, blunt head, and their mouth is pretty small. The biggest representatives of this species can grow as long as 23 feet. One more thing that makes Pacific sleepers stand apart is their color. It's not that silver and white shade you'd expect from a proper shark. Dark gray, or even black, helps Pacific sharks blend in with the sunless depths in which they live. In addition, Pacific sleepers have tiny eyes, which are most often colonized by parasites. These nightmarish minuscule creatures occupy the outer layer of the shark's eye and munch on the tissue, making the sharks almost blind. Luckily, they have a perfect sense of smell to help them not to starve. 
It's probably obvious that Pacific sharks live in the Pacific Ocean. But while researchers used to think that this species lived only in the north, some of these gigantic predators have been spotted near Mexico and even Taiwan. Tiger shark, 24 feet long. The tiger shark is one of the largest shark species in the world. Their average length can reach 16 feet, but the largest specimen reached 24 feet. They can weigh 800 to 1500 pounds, which is heavier than the average horse. Why exactly are they called tiger sharks? It's because when a baby shark is born, it's covered with dark stripes resembling those of a tiger. Unfortunately, this pretty pattern fades when a shark becomes older. Just like their namesakes, tiger sharks are excellent hunters. Besides using their perfect eyesight and developed sense of smell, these sharks have one more advantage. Near their snouts are special pores filled with a substance that resembles jelly. This substance can sense electric fields. All living beings give off some kind of electric field. Thus, a tiger shark can always find its prey. The most unique thing about a tiger shark is its teeth. They are not just super sharp, they also have saw-like edges. These teeth are so strong that they can easily bite through a clam or a sea turtle. Uh-oh, one more unwanted image to make our nightmares more exciting. Basking shark, 39 feet long. The basking shark is the second largest shark alive today. Surprisingly, you don't have to scatter away as soon as you see this bus-sized giant. Basking sharks are gentle creatures whose diet consists of fish eggs, plankton, and other tiny organisms. Basking sharks feed by filtering water. That's why their mouths are simply colossal. Adult sharks have three-foot wide maws. In only one hour, a shark can filter more than 1,800 tons of water through its gills. Why basking sharks? This name appeared thanks to the habit these peaceful leviathans have of lounging near the surface of the water and seemingly basking in sunlight. In fact, soaking up some sun isn't their main goal. The higher the latitudes are, the more plankton congregates there. Whale shark, 40 feet long. If you've ever dreamed of meeting the largest fish in the world, here you go. Let us introduce the whale shark. Although they are called whale sharks, these creatures have nothing in common with whales. But honestly speaking, they don't resemble your usual shark either. The character of these giants is docile and calm, and they don't present any real danger to humans. Whale sharks can grow to a whopping 46 feet long, and their weight can reach 12 tons. Just like basking sharks, whale sharks sieve the tiny marine organisms through their gills. They also eat small fish, squid, and krill. Does this make whale sharks toothless? Not at all. In fact, each of these creatures has a mouthful of 3,000 tiny teeth, which, in all fairness, they don't use. Another thing that separates whale sharks from others is the way they swim. Instead of using their tail, they move their body from side to side. Well, you might be unlucky enough to come across some of these monsters in our modern seas and oceans. But what about the real giants? We mean sharks that have become extinct but terrorized marine inhabitants many centuries ago. Cretoxerina, 25 feet long. Cretoxerina is also known as the Ginsu shark. This creature roamed the seas and oceans 100 million years ago in the Cretaceous period. Despite this fact, they look pretty similar to modern sharks. These predators reached a weight of 1,000 to 2,000 pounds and could grow as long as 25 feet. They had incredibly sharp teeth, not unlike knives. Therefore, their diet included not only fish and smaller marine animals, but also a random dinosaur, for example, a Tylosaurus. Otodus, 30 feet long. This massive shark reigned over the oceans 60 to 45 million years ago. Otodus could grow up to 30 feet in length and weigh more than 4,000 pounds. That's the weight of the average new car in the US. This predator could also boast razor sharp, four inch long teeth. With the help of these daggers, Otodus feasted on big fish and whales. Helicoprion, 30 feet long. Helicoprion was not only one of the biggest, but also one of the most uncommon prehistoric sharks. It lived about 290 million years ago. These sharks got their name Helicoprion from the Greek for spiral saw thanks to the highly unusual coils of teeth lining their jaws. Those coils tended to unfurl like a table saw, crushing their prey. Try to get this image out of your head now. Tychodus, 30 feet long. Tychodus, which means folded teeth in Greek, lived 90 to 60 million years ago. This was a massive shark that could reach 30 feet in length with a weight that varied between 1 and 2,000 pounds. This shark was different from other prehistoric sharks because it had large teeth. 
which, however, were flat. Due to this fact, Tychodus was a bottom feeder with a diet of shellfish and mollusks. Have you ever seen a shark? Tell us about your experience in the comments below. And if the biggest predators of the oceans have managed to impress you, give us a thumbs up.